From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. I've been getting compliments on my outfit, hat, shoes, so I'm just... The love is in the air. The love is in the air. You can see all the love. A celebration of pride covers the streets of San Francisco. We look at all the events as we're eyeing an LGBTQ rights case in the Supreme Court. Jocelyn. Plus, Amanda, we could be losing the A's in the near future, but now San Jose is sending Major League Baseball one more pitch. This really feels like the moment to make our case to MLB. The letter is sent to Major League Baseball's commissioner. And we are off to a cool start for this work week, but daytime highs, they're going to hit the triple digits in certain spots this week. I'm going to break that down and where that's going to happen coming up in your first alert forecast. I'm already making my pool plans for the weekend, Jess. We are looking live outside, though, on this Monday morning. We have a few more days to get there. And you can see it actually looks like it's a little wet on our camera, too, looking at the city of San Francisco this morning. Can't see the sun, a little cloudy and gloomy out for us, and it's a little chilly, too. Yeah. So just how cool is it? You know, that marine layer is so dense right now that we will see that mist. Mm -hmm. I even had to use my windshield wiper a little bit this morning, but that will start to break apart heading into this afternoon, just like Pride yesterday for that mm -hmm. parade. We started off kind of cool, mm -hmm. misty, cloudy for sure, but there was a big turnaround into yeah, the I afternoon hours. Now, here's what we're looking at right now at the Golden Gate Bridge. Kind of a calm start to the morning. Traffic doesn't look bad. The winds are starting to get a little bit gustier. The marine layer is kind of holding up around that 750 mark just above that tower of the Golden Gate Bridge. Here's what we're looking at for current conditions right now heading into this afternoon. Now, Walnut Creek, we still have that marine layer holding strong and that cloud deck is still pushing its way into the East Bay too. Heading into this afternoon, we are gonna hit the 70s, but that's well below average for this time of year. I mentioned it just a second ago. We're going to hit the triple digits in certain pockets, and that'll be off in the East Bay later this week as high pressure starts to build its way in. But for now, we're still off to a cool, mild start just off into the distance. You can't even see Oakland right now because that marine layer is so strong from San Francisco over to the Bay Bridge. But today, daytime highs in Oakland are also only hitting the 60s. So mild for us today. We have a big warm up around the corner later this week. The winds are going to start dying down later this week, too. We'll see plenty of sunshine, lots of UV rays. It's going to be a scorcher for us in certain pockets. And I want to kind of break down why that's happening and let you know which areas you should definitely be extra cautious for coming up in your first alert forecast, but for now I'm going to send it over to you, Jocelyn. All right, thank you, Jess. Let's give you an update on this accident that we have been monitoring, especially for our super commuters out there. This is near the Altamont Pass. The right-hand shoulder continues to be blocked. This is because of a crash on 580 eastbound. This is at the International Parkway exit, so just expect some delays in and around that area. You can see those 14 mile and an hour uh, speeds in that area. There's also a high wind advisory at the Altamont Pass, so just be extra aware of that. You're looking at about a 51 minute drive from 205 over to 680. At the Bay Bridge, things are really getting busy. Those metering lights are on 27 minute drive from the toll plaza over to the city. At the San Mateo Bridge, you're looking at about a 12 minute drive from 880 over to 101. Amanda. All right, Jocelyn, thanks. Let's get to our top stories. A lot to get to this morning as tensions remain high in Russia following that attempted uprising by the Wagner mercenary group. Locals cheered Wagner paramilitary members as they left in the city of Rostov-on-Don in the south of Russia. The group challenged Vladimir Putin's army leaders. They were ordered back to their base camps in Ukraine after Belarus worked out a truce between Putin and Wagner's leader, who will be in exile in Belarus as part of that deal. The entire situation has put the strength of Putin's power into question. Back here in the United States, millions of Americans are facing the threat of extreme weather still, including more than 50 million people who are in the path of oppressive heat in the south. Temperatures are reaching over 100 degrees in parts of Texas. And this comes as tornadoes are also being reported in the Midwest. Indiana got hit pretty hard, actually. Severe weather is set to continue in the days to come. The Coast Guard has launched an investigation into what caused the Titan submersible to implode with the people on board. Part of the process includes collecting evidence by salvaging debris. After it's collected, investigators will likely hold a formal hearing. They'll also look into whether Ocean Gate Expeditions, the company in charge of the submersible, violated the law. So the Supreme Court is entering its last week of summer session. One case they're already looking at whether or not a business can deny services to LGBTQ customers. A graphic designer in Colorado says she does not want to work with gay couples, citing religious reasons. 
But under Colorado state law, a business may not refuse to serve because of sexual orientation. The courts heard arguments and are set to make their decision. That's a look at your top stories. Hope, love, pride. Proudly presented by Pet Food Express and Broadway San Jose. Well, it was a weekend of celebrations for Pride here in San Francisco. Thousands of people descended on the city yesterday for the 53rd annual Pride Parade in celebration. <laughs> Market Street packed with thousands of marchers and onlookers for the biggest event of the year, lining the streets from the Embarcadero down to Civic Center Plaza. People came from across the Bay Area and the country to take part. I haven't been to the Pride Parade before, and because we're so close to the area, I heard San Francisco is just the best place for Pride Parades. It's about unity and togetherness and one and a big umbrella of happiness and joy and love. Oh my gosh, so much happiness there. God, I love seeing that. So notable faces among the parade included Mayor London Bree, State Senator Scott Weiner, and former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. It means pride and joy and respect for our community. I'm so excited that people are so optimistic this year in light of the challenges that we face. But we're proud of them. They represent our San Francisco values. After the parade, the party spilled into the Castro, where celebrations continued into the morning. Betty Yu was there for it all. The Castro was packed with people ready to have a good time Sunday evening. They came dressed in their rainbow best. There were lines spilling out of bars on both sides of the street on 18th. Pride was also good for business. Marcello's Pizza said sales were about four times what they normally are on a Sunday. This is a great turnout, and I'm going to use the word hope again. This gives a lot of hope to all of our small businesses out here. It's, it feels really good. Much better than last year, I can say that. Very, very well. While he's encouraged, manager Alex Evola said things aren't quite back to the way they were pre-pandemic. Some people we spoke with took notice. It's different than years past. I've been coming for over 30 years and um, it's sort of not the same vibe it used to be from years past. It used to be more closed. vibrant? Yeah, a lot of the bars are closed now, a lot of the stores are closed. Yeah, it's not as many people as it was. San Francisco resident Edward Fauché and his friends still enjoyed Pride. They started the day riding in the parade before strolling through the Castro. Beautiful vibe. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful vibe. I mean, people been I've been getting compliments on my outfit, hat, shoes. So I'm just... The love is in the air. The love is in the air. We picked up some bling, you know, to make it a little stylish. <laughs> and, uh, Even your shoes. Check out the Oh, you shoes. love our shoes? This year, threats and violence against this community are on the rise as hundreds of bills seek to restrict LGBTQ rights across the country. Partygoers say it's more important than ever to show their pride and uplift one another. It's really widespread throughout the country that, you know, there's violence against trans women of color, you know, and so we have to stand and we have to be visible in who we are, you know, and we can't be afraid of who we are. There was also a heavy police presence throughout the Castro. SFPD officers could be seen at virtually every corner. There were gatherings across the country, though, from Denver to Chicago to New York City. Thousands of people across the country in observance of Pride Day, as you can see right here. And it wasn't just here in the U.S. All weekend long, there have been Pride parades across the globe. Here's just two of them, Toronto and Santiago, Chile. And the festivals were an opportunity to protest what many have called a political attack on the LGBTQ plus community. As of this month, Missouri became the 20th state to restrict or ban transgender hormones and surgeries for minors. Our community is under attack right now. Nationally, it's under attack. A study this year by queer advocacy group GLAD found that 84% of Americans outside the community support equal rights for LGBTQ people. That's actually an all-time high. And today marks eight years since gay marriage became legal in all 50 states. The Supreme Court ruled that same-sex marriage could not be banned, but there is growing concern that today's Supreme Court could reverse that ruling. So if that were to happen, Prop 8, which bans same-sex marriage, could come back to haunt California because it's still in the state constitution. An amendment to remove it is expected to go before voters 
in November of 2024. If you missed yesterday's special Pride coverage, you can still see all of our Pride Month stories on our website, kprx.com, or streaming on the free CBS News app.